Alright, in this episode of Guitar History, we're looking at my 2019 Sir Antique Custom Modern. So the concept for this guitar started back in uh, late 2017. Um, I was talking to the guys at Sir and my artist manager at the time was you know, saying, is it time for a new guitar? Is there anything that you've been thinking about over the last few years that you'd like to have in a, in a new guitar? And I wasn't really interested in something um, because I was quite happy playing my modern and, and using my uh, Antique S in the studio. And that's when the idea hit that they suggested, why don't we try and do something where we bring the best of the modern and the antique S together and see what we can come up with. And I thought that was a really cool idea and that began this guitar story. At that time I was really enjoying the tone of the uh, antique S which I use in the studio a lot. So straight away I wanted to try a modern that had across the board a much more uh, vintage bass. So in that regard we went with a roasted alder body and a roasted maple neck, which you can see here looks awesome. And I'm a total convert to the roasted maple. It's uh, being straight as an arrow since day one. I've never touched the truss rod. Feels absolutely amazing. And uh, tonally, it's, it's exceptional. It's very loud and spanky and really adds a lot of character. So the guys at Sir asked me what I would want it to look like and my mind immediately flashed to this old vintage Strat that was for sale once upon a time in a guitar store that I worked at. And I just fell in love with the color and the way it looked. And I thought it would be so cool to bring that to like a really modern guitar. And um, it was actually an, an Olympic white Strat that had just been chain smoked around and smashed on the road for decades. And it had faded to this kind of custard yellow color. And I just thought that was so cool. So I dug up lots of images of similar guitars and the guitar and sent it to the guys and said, can we do something like this? And uh, they suggested that we start with something called antique yellow and tweak it slightly to get it just right. And as you can see, the, the finish and uh, the look of it is absolutely perfect. It has that kind of yellow look slightly kind of dirty white kind of thing going on, which looks awesome. The next stage of the aesthetic development was the uh, Relic Antique job that I really, really wanted to get right as far as matching it to the way my Antique Classic S looks. I've just thought that the attention to detail, uh, and not just the way it looks, but the way it feels as well, it has a very particular feel on the body, the way it resonates, uh, the feel of the neck. I really wanted to bring those across to this guitar. So that started probably a six month back and forward as far as trading images, getting on FaceTime, uh, studying and looking at my antique gas and uh, comparing relic jobs. And uh, the guys were just awesome with involving me in every step of the way. We did it slowly until it was just right and I was constantly getting updates, providing feedback on the way it was visually coming together, which in a way makes this guitar really special because I was really um, at the helm of watching how it happened, and guiding how it looks. The neck profile was another really important part of the guitar and uh, the original idea was that we were going to scan and and basically copy the neck from my antique S over onto this one. But the neck on that is so big uh, in profile that it just physically wasn't gonna be possible on a modern unless the truss rod entrance port was brought down here. And that's just not possible on the modern seeing as the neck pickup is pretty much right up against the fretboard. So we ended up doing the largest and closest profile to that and it just feels amazing. It's, it's thick and uh, and provides a lot of woody, barky, big tone to the guitar, and uh, it just feels great. One of the things that I really liked about that 
original uh, Olympic wide vintage Stratocaster that I was basing some of the aesthetics of this guitar on was the inlays and uh, there's something just magical about when a guitar uh, gets played a lot in a certain way the way the old clay dots would react with finger grease and you know dirt and all that kind of stuff and so I sent a lot of images to the guys of the style of dot that I wanted and as you can see it just turned out beautifully on this guitar and uh, really sets off the, the visuals. An important part of the Antique S, my recording guitar, is the uh, super thin nitro finish. So that was also done to this guitar, which not only gives it a beautiful look, but adds a huge amount to the tone. I, I really didn't realize how much it added uh, until I compared it with my other modern, which is uh, a poly. Still amazing, but just totally different. Um, so this guitar is just very lively and acoustic and you know you really feel it shaking up against you when you do a chord. Now as far as the layout and the electronics, I wanted to bring everything over from my Black Martin into this guitar. So we have the same SSH Plus in the bridge which is absolutely amazing and perfect for what I do. And the SSB neck um, which is a wonderful warm creamy vintage sounding neck pickup. A beautiful contrast to the SSH Plus, which is really wild and clear and articulate and modern sounding and forgiving. Really great combination. Single volume knob um, with as much crammed into this area as possible, so simple three-way blade. And uh, this little special push-push pot, which I have on the Black Martin as well, which uh, enables me to really easily activate the split on this guitar, which I probably do about 10 times per song when I'm playing live. So having that uh, nice reactive push-push makes it very easy for me to engage and disengage that. A key difference to my other modern and this one is I decided to go for the more vintage bent saddle uh, setup on the same Goto 510 bridge now, when I was talking to the guys about the kind of tonal quality that I wanted in this guitar, this was a very strong recommendation and it makes an enormous difference going from a more modern block saddle to a more vintage uh, bent saddle. This guitar has a lot more of a metallic, unforgiving, uh, spanky kind of sound, whereas my other modern has a very smooth, um, compressed and even sound and a lot of that comes from the saddles and it's uh, one of my favorite things about this guitar and when you split the guitar that is such a huge part of how convincing it sounds. This guitar also features the same custom low profile tremolo bar that my Black Modern has and uh, to me it feels absolutely perfect when you're playing it sits in at an angle just between your thumb and index finger so you barely notice it there and uh, it allows me to do hybrid picking, uh, riffing, you know, whatever and I barely notice that the bar is floating perfectly between my fingers and I can execute um, tremolo uh, easily. Alright, so a bit of a crazy story. When the guitar was finished uh, I was tracking it as it was coming to Australia and it eventually made it to customs and then all the tracking stopped and it was probably about a week or two later I got a phone call saying that because of the uh, CITES regulations on Rosewood and some small discrepancy in paperwork that I was never going to be able to get the guitar and that they'd seized it and that they were actually going to destroy it by incinerating it. So that was obviously bad news and um, caused me quite a bit of anguish at the time and they said really the only avenue to get the guitar at that point was to kind of make a legal pitch to have it released to me which I did and I got lots of people involved and made a case and it was probably about three months later that they you know released it to me and and uh, you know apologized for the whole debacle and now the Ascites thing is not a problem and a lot of people got swept up in that, including me. So there was quite a long period of time where this guitar was 
really not going to exist. And so it's just made it that much more special that I have it and that it wasn't incinerated. So once it was finally released from the grips of uh, Australian Customs to me, it arrived just as I was wrapping up, writing the last few songs on the forthcoming record. And thankfully, I did get to use it on one full song on the album. And I really had no plan on this song. I just thought, as soon as I get this guitar, I'm just gonna sit down, start writing something, see what it wants to do, you know, let it pull me in whatever stylistic direction feels right. And that track is probably my favorite on the album, uh, just because I formed a relationship with this guitar um, as I was making music to release. So that was really cool. And uh, it, it sounds beautiful uh, on the recording. And I'm looking forward to you guys hearing that one. Uh, I haven't taken it out on tour too much. I've brought it out uh, a few times and it's a wonderful compliment to my uh, Black Modern, which is just the total opposite of this guitar in every way. And for some, you know, more of the kind of old school sounding tracks in this set, I'll flip this one out and it just sounds absolutely awesome. And it's always a head turner. People are asking me about it and, you know, wanting to get up close and look at it. And um, it's because once you do get up close, you can see that so much care and detail and craftsmanship went into it and uh, it's certainly a very special instrument and I'm looking forward to making a lot more music with it and taking it out on the road a whole lot more when we're able to make it.